Hello everyone, uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, I recently got a new Daytona and I thought I'd share a quick review uh, for those who are subscribing to the channel. Um, I plan to do a video uh, of my full collection and also another video to talk about my new Audemars Piguet. So uh, subscribe uh, if you haven't already done so. Uh, and like the video so that I know if it's of any use or not. So let's start to talk about this beautiful Rolex Daytona. Uh, as those who are in the know would know that this is not an easy watch to come by. Uh, I am the second person to get this watch from my dealer. Um, the first one was a black one and I had my eyes set on the white and I had put my name down for this even before Rolex launched this. Um, basically walked into the dealer a couple of weeks before Basel this year and I said if anything happens to the Daytona put my name down for it and my dealer delivered as he always does. Um, I had wanted a Daytona for, well, ever since I had had my Speedmaster, which is about three or four years ago, uh, I had always admired the Daytona as a watch for, you know, for as long as I remember. But I never bought one because I wasn't too happy about the steel bezel uh, every time I saw one on a friend's wrist or in a dealer, a pre-owned dealer, I would noticed that the black numerals would have got scratched off and almost faded. The bezel was full of scratches and I couldn't live with a watch that would tarnish that easily. So when this came I, I knew that it would be the one and I had always liked white dial watches so it was a no-brainer to get the white one and I'd find that the the red Daytona uh, writing really stands out on the on the white dial so looking at the watch uh, the only difference from the previous version is uh, the bezel and the dial um, the rest of the watch is pretty much the same the, the bracelet the clasp and the movement it's all the same so what Rolex did was they replaced the previous bezel with a ceramic one and the dial was slightly tweaked to have black uh, circles for the tachymeter sorry the chronograph and the tachymeter writing was changed so that it's not all flat it's it takes the curve of the bezel so what do I think of it? I think it is a stunning watch. As a, as wide dial watches go, uh, I don't think there aren't many. There are many other watches in this caliber as a wide dial watch, or as a chronograph watch. This and the Speedmaster, I think, are by far the the best. And just look at the detail on this dial. Rolex really know how to how to pull something off. Beautiful white gold markers, pens, and I think it's platinum blasted or laser etched uh, markings on the vessel. And uh, as you know, the, the pushers are screwed down, so you unscrew it. Oop and start and stop and unscrew reset on the wrist i find that the daytona wears quite small um, i can't explain it um, it could be this fact that the dial is surrounded by this black bezel it for a 40 millimeter watch, it looks quite small. 
So you can see that on my wrist now. That's 40. And it does not look like a big wash in any way. It almost looks small. And you can compare that to the sub, which is also 40 millimeters, but of course thicker. And that looks big. So you can see the difference. You could probably say that it's because of the the ratio of the bezel. They look like completely different size watches. The sub is 40, the Daytona is 40. But the wide lugs of the sub and the the thick chunky bezel makes the sub look significantly larger than a than the Daytona. I think these two are probably the only Rolexes I'd need. Might at a day date at some at some stage when I feel old enough for it. Uh, but as far as Rolex export watches go, um, a sub, diver, chronograph, maybe a Rolex GMT down the line. And that's it. So if you have any questions about the new Daytona, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer it. Um, black versus white, I can't really say anything because it's a matter of personal preference. I prefer the white because it's very unique. Um, in the week that I've worn this, a um, couple of people have commented on the fact that, uh, well, saying that it's only sort of at watch dealers and watch shops that people are commenting on it. Uh, you know, they're asking me if it's for sale or if, uh, if I know a way of getting another one or, you know, it's, it's an extremely high demand watch. Uh, and even when the hype wears out, I know that this is gonna still be one of the most desired watches. I know for a fact that uh, there's already maybe a three, four year waiting list at one AD and the other AD has stopped taking orders because they have 60 people on the list uh, and they probably would get about four to six a year. So it's already hit. 10 years essentially uh, which is ridiculous but that that is the demand for a Rolex Daytona so if you have any questions or comments please let me know um, and I'll do my best to answer it one final look there you go the Rolex Daytona 116500 and then thanks.